This is part four in your needle felted cat head series and today I'm going to be needle felting some cat ears. There's 12 steps including the basic shape, adding some colour and detail, making thin, attaching to the head and a very unique technique at the end on those cat ear hairs and the end result will be some gorgeous realistic cat ears. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up with the latest tutorials. Step one for ear position. First think about your real cat. Is it in a friendly and alert mood? With the ears facing forward and upright? My Burman cat ears are going to be fairly upright and relaxed. But maybe your cat is not in a great mood. Maybe preparing for a fight or defence. Flattening the ears keeps the inner ears protected. So what mood is your cat going to be in? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you decided to do. Here's how I marked out the position of the ears before adding the fur. The left side of my right ear will be in line with where the middle of the eye is. And the right will go up from the corner of the eye. I'm going to use a strip of wool as a marker. You can easily move these if you get it wrong to start with. I'm using my front facing and my side sketch to work out where the ear will go. You need to make sure there's enough distance between the eye and the ear. Cats have quite a big forehead. Take a look at pictures of real cats to get a real idea of how this will go. This is the line where the base of the ear will go, so make it curved, just like the ear will be curved. Just dab it lightly into place with a needle. When you're happy with that side, you can then go on to do the left side and just make sure that they match. Look from all angles to check they are correct. Step two, getting familiar with cat ear anatomy. The ear is not an exact triangle, but more like a little sloping hill. Of course, the breed will really determine the shape, which I will show you at the end of this step. But for my tabby Berman, I'm just following the shape according to the real photos. For the right ear, then we have a fairly steep slope to the peak. And on the way back, we have a little bump at the bottom. And it's in this area that there's a front and back flap to form a little pouch. And the pouch is known as Henry's Pocket. You can see this very clever and quirky design in these photos. The purpose is thought to amplify sound, but also potentially to help with flexibility when flattening down the ear. Now from the base to the tip of the ear is approximately the same as going from the eye to the base of the ear. So if I draw my eye in here, you'll see what I mean. It's important also to look from the side because the ear really isn't flat. It is a curve, especially at the base, it's a lot thicker and curvy. So you'll need to think about this when making your ears. There's also those wonderful cat ear hairs. I'll show you a unique way of doing these in step 12. So here's my cat after adding the face fur. And here are my wool markers from earlier. Before making the ears, then I need to know the measurements. So for the width of my ears, I want them to be around four centimetres. And the base to the tip, I'm going to go for four and a half to five centimetres roughly. Now, of course, there might be some variation in ear shape. So if you're working with the owl like Scottish fold breed, the ears are going to be short and folded. Or maybe you have a Maine Coon that you're making with the very large, tall ears. They even have little tufty bits on the top of their ears as well. So do bear the breed in mind. Step three, felting the basic ear shape. You can use carded wool, but I'm going to show you how to felt the ears using these tops. The fibres are going much the same way, so I'll need to make sure that they felt well. I'm going to pull apart some strips and lay them down flat on my felting base. Overlap them slightly. This is how you would start a 2D felted picture, for example. And then I'm going to lay some the other way. 
You want this thick enough so that there's no light shining through if you were to hold it up against the light. You can use a multi-tool if you have one to make this a lot quicker and easier. I'm using a clover multi-needle tool. Stab all over with your needles, making sure that the edges are nice and neat and there's no fraying areas. I'm aiming for a kind of rectangle at the moment. And then just check that your overall length is way exceeding the five centimeters that you have measured out. And also way exceeding the uh, width as well. Carefully remove it from your felting base. Turn it over and then stab in the same way on the other side. You'll notice your piece will shrink as you stab and felt more. I'm going to start to build the slope on the right side of my ear. So using a single needle, such as a 38 or 40 gauge triangle, really start to define that edge. Keep measuring as you go. And to get the left side, you'll need to measure your width, but cut just outside of that measurement. Then fold that edge and then start felting and defining that edge. Trim off any excess wool from the base, still leaving a sufficient fringe for attachment later. And keep felting for a nice defined and strong ear. Step four, needle felting a neat edge safely. One method I use for neatening the edge and to ensure there's no loose fibers is to simply use a piece of thick paper or card folded in half to form like a mini wallet. Then simply hold the ear flat in between the two sides. You will still need to be very careful not to stab your fingers, but this is a lot safer and a simply shallow felt at various angles along that edge. Please do use some finger protectors though if you feel that that is a better method for you. And when you've done one edge, you can flip over and do the other edge. And there you have nice, strong, neat edges. Step five, starting the second ear. Lay down your strips of wool as you did before and aim for a square or a, a rectangle shape again. This second ear can be slightly easier because you're using your first one as the template. So cut around the first ear, but leave a slight margin where you're going to fold at the edge. Then keep stabbing until you get the shape that you want the same as the other one. I removed some of my base as I felt it was a little bit too thick and long. Define those edges and use your card wallet if you need to again to make those edges nice and neat. Step six, inside ear colours. The Tabby Berman has a lighter inner ear so I'm going to be laying on layers of creamy white and then felting them down with my needles. If you don't want any white to show through the other side, you will need to do this at an angle. I'm adding fur the other side, so for me it doesn't matter. Don't worry about neatening the edges as we're going to be adding strips along the edge after. So here I'm laying the white merino tops along the edge for a nice silky smooth finish. I'm just showing you one ear, but I will do the other ear as well. If you've been stabbing straight through, then when you turn it over, you'll see there's lots of the white coming through. And so this is actually one method of having fluffy fur on the back. You can simply take your needle and then brush the fibers as if you're brushing with a brush. And it gives a kind of a nice mottled look, a mixture of the brown wool with the white and you can keep stabbing as hard as you like through to the other side. If you have one, you can also use the comb side of an eyebrow brush. That way you can comb the fibers in the way they should go, just like real fur. 
to fluff up fibres to make them fluffy, you can also use the actual brush side. Have a little play and see what you think. And then give it a little trim. This next step shows an alternative method for the back of the ear fur. If you want long strands of thick fur for the back of your ears, this is the method you might want to use. It takes a little bit longer, but it's really effective. I'm hand blending some brown and grey, cutting into short strips, ready to felt onto the ear. I'm going to start at the tip and work my way to the base, layering layer by layer. Try to stab at an angle with your needle as much as possible, but you may get the odd fibre coming through to your white. For long fur attachment methods, please check out the video that I'll pop the link to now. To briefly explain though, I am felting along the middle parting of my piece, folding it over and then refelting that edge. This helps to securely fix the pieces in place. I am layering each piece in the direction that I want the fur to go and making sure there are no gaps in between. Then you can trim the fibres to the length that you'd like them to be. Now you might like all the fibres that came through, that might be the, the look that you're after, but for me I'm going to give them a trim and then add another colour. I'm using a colour that's called mink and it's a very light kind of pink colour. Or you could just add some more white. This is a very thin layer and shouldn't really affect the other side now, as long as you go very shallow of course. Step 9, Henry's Pockets. To make the Henry's pocket, create a little rope of your white by stabbing and rolling between warm hands. Don't worry about the length too much, we're going to cut it very soon. Create a little curve, a bit like a C shape, and stab the top end of the C very firmly into place to the side of your ear. Snip any excess at the top and keep stabbing and shaping. This piece should look and feel like it's part of the ear, not that it's just simply been added on top. Snip at the other end of the C shape and stab that end firmly into place as well. Add some thin wisps over those edges to blend in. The C shaped rope should look like the edge of a flap, not like a separate rope. Take a small segment of the rope that you already cut off. This will become the back flap edge. Stab it into place. Now you will have created two flaps, a front and a back, and a little crevice which is now Henry's pocket. And here are both ears, both with their Henry's pockets. Step 10, making thinner ears. To make the top part of the ears thinner, I'm using some straighteners. Only for a few seconds on each squeeze and very carefully pulling the fibers towards the tip in the direction that the fur goes in. It's also a great way to make that curve in the ear. Have a go and see what you think. I find that it really makes the ears far more realistic. Then you can use your needle or a comb to revive the fibres. So you still have the fluffy fur look. Step 11, attaching the ears. Tease out the fibres along the fringe edge at the base of the ears. You'll be felting these fibres down into the head of your cat. Then align the left edge of the right ear in place at the point where your wool marker begins. And use a pin to fix it temporarily in place. Follow your wool marker line and then fix the right side of the ear in place with the pin. 
The left slope was a little bit too slanted for me, so I made it more upright and repositioned the pin. As you can see, you can redo this as many times as you need until you're happy with the position, as is the wonder of pins. <laughs> when happy, then you can position the second ear. Again, follow the line of your wool marker, but keep looking at the other ear to make sure that it's symmetrical. The base of the ear is fairly thick, so you may need a few pins to keep it all in place. I just about got away with the four that I had. Once you're happy with the position, you can get stabbing. Try to keep that bottom curve of the base of the ear. Stab deeply and securely to keep your ears in place firm. If you're adding the ears after the face fur, just be careful not to squish your face fur fibres. Don't forget to go and stab the front fringe as well. You'll find that you continue to shape the ears as you attach them. I'm adding a bit more wool to the base of the ears to thicken and extend further into the head. Keep referring back to pictures of real cats to ensure you have the right shape. You'll find that the back of the ear is a lot thicker than the front. I decided to add some more core wool to the back of the head to add more depth before adding on the long fur. And finally, step 12, the ear hairs. To create those beautiful and unique hairs across the ears, I'm going to show you my special technique. All you need are some wool tops, but we want the individual fibres to really spread out and without the need to stab into place individual fibres. So take a section and cut off both ends so that you've got straight edges. Divide into two so that you have one for each ear. Take the comb side of your eyebrow brush, place the teeth of the comb into the fibres and slowly comb the fibres but not all the way to the end. Jiggle it as you go and some of the fibres will mat and tangle. This will form a clumped edge. Then purposely brush right the way through to the end to separate the fibres out. It's the clumped line that you're going to be felting into the ear. These special hairs on cats will always go one direction, from the inner side to the outer side. Very carefully stab into place with your needle then you can give it a trim. This technique makes it so much easier than trying to stab individual hairs and the hairs are spread fully out unlike with the usual long hair method. You can then trim the length of the hairs according to where you'd like them to be. Anyway, I hope this is a useful tip and you have lots of fun trying it out. And once you've done the other ear, you'll have completed your cat ears. Well done. Please do subscribe and you might want to watch this one next.